This video is designed to show you all of the important features of your new Williams turbojet. It will also show you how to operate it safely and get the most out of your boat. The turbojet is a high performance boat, so before taking it out on the water, we recommend you have a minimum of RYA Level 2 or the ICC certificate. This is your owner's pack that comes with the boat. Inside, you'll find an owner's manual showing you how to safely operate your turbojet. We strongly recommend that you read it before taking your boat out. The pack also contains a spare lanyard, ignition keys, power limit keys and other equipment manuals to help you maintain your boat, so remember to keep it in a safe place. The warranty registration needs to be filled in and sent back to us to validate your warranty. You can do this by post or on our website. To complete the form, you'll need your tender's hull identification number, HIN. This is located on the starboard side of the transom. Here's a quick overview of your new turbojet from bow to stern. Depending on which model you've purchased, the turbojet comes with a combination of storage including bow locker and passenger seat locker. The navigation lights are located under the engine hatch and attach here and here. The turbojet has three footwell drain bungs, one located in the front and two in the driver footwell. To use them, simply pull up the lever and remove the bungs when you're at planing speed. This will cause the footwell to drain. Make sure you replace the bungs before the tender comes to a complete stop, otherwise the footwell will refill. There is also a manually operated bilge pump located on the dashboard. The turbojet has four lifting points, two at the bow and two at the stern. When lifting the boat, always make sure to use the Williams lifting strops available for your turbojet. The fuel filler is located underneath the front of the passenger seat here. All of our tenders come equipped with a fully automatic fire suppression system. This is located under the engine hatch here. The battery is located here. When you first receive your tender from us, the battery will be disconnected. All you need to do is reconnect the negative terminal as shown. The fuel tank is located at the front of the engine bay here, and the fuse box is located at the bow end of the engine bay. If you want to tow your tender behind a parent yacht, it's very important to close the towing valve, otherwise the engine will flood, causing serious damage. The turbojet speed and RPM dials are located on the dash here. Please refer to the owner's manual if any warning lights become illuminated. Before operating your tender, it's important to be aware that the jet propulsion system is always producing thrust, even when idling in neutral. This results in the boat creeping forward slightly. There's a great benefit to this, as the boat can be maneuvered at ultra low speed and can be spun within its own length. To turn the tender while underway, you need to apply thrust, as the boat has no rudder. If you're coasting along without thrust, your ability to steer will be severely reduced. To start your turbojet, first ensure the boat is in at least two feet of water. Visually check the bilge for water ingress, oil or fuel contamination. Also check that the coolant level is safely between minimum and maximum. The turbojet has a separate battery isolator switch located under the helm seat. Turn this 90 degrees to power the boat up. Run the bilge blower for two minutes to remove any residual fuel vapours. Check that no loose ropes or debris are in the water that could foul the jet pump intake. If anything does become entangled in the jet impeller, immediately stop the engine and visually inspect the intake grate. If you cannot remove the debris by hand, contact your closest Williams service agent. Failure to do so could result in serious engine damage. If the jet pump intake is clear, make sure the shift lever is in the neutral position. Check that the safety lanyard is attached to both you and the boat. Turn the ignition key located underneath the helm seat until the engine starts. Pull the lanyard out to test that the emergency engine kill switch is working. If it is, you can put the lanyard back in, restart the engine and off you go. 